do that next week probably. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so how to handle conflict. I think um, what I'd like to sort of share around that, it's, it's an interesting question. Also, quickly to sort of frame, you know, the stuff that I got from Hawkins. So you have levels of consciousness. And the bottom levels of consciousness, i.e. when the ego is most inflated, meaning when there's too, lots of fear and thinking, those, those are the most inflated, uh, inflated ego levels. So how, when one is in a lot of ego, a lot of fear and a lot of thinking, a lot of control, one operates from uh, a level of force. You know, one hasn't got any connection to spiritual power. So usually one is trying to um, force, use ego force to persuade the other person to change their behavior. Uh, and because you're not connected to spiritual power, that's the only thing you can do. And that might work, and especially if you're like a seven foot tall bodybuilder, you could probably influence people to not do things if you're in conflict with them. So that's the thing. As you get more spiritual power, and I'll talk about how to get more spiritual power in relationship to a conflict with another person, then how you perceive the situation, what you see the problem is starts to shift. Because as you're doing spiritual work, you start to see the, your perception of the world and what's wrong with the world also starts to shift. You start to see through spiritual filters. Like there's a lesson in A Course in Miracles, I pray for a miracle and a shift in my perception because you're not, you're not going to see it through the prism of fear and control and anger and powerlessness so much as you move up and up. When you get to the higher levels of uh, spiritual consciousness, then you get the highest, you know, the highest intuitive, shall we say, information and ideas on how to resolve it from the highest level. Now, there's, now that's just a brief thing. You know, like, do I, to what extent, when I have a conflict with an individual, now, just some practical tips. Um, you know, if, 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 let's say I suddenly get a conflict with someone, I'm full of anger and rage, and I, I want to get even with this person or tell them that they're wrong. I know if, I mean, if I have to speak immediately, I'll speak immediately, but I would, I prefer not to. I prefer to spiritually process if I've got time, because I want to come up from the high spiritual level. You know, sometimes it's unavoidable. I mean, if, if you're in a conflict and you have to speak, then you have to speak. And if you speak from a level of extreme anger and retaliation, then, then, then you do that. But remember, when you, when you speak with anger and control to another human being, um, there's likely to be... When you try and force someone to do something from a place of anger, on some level, even if they don't, you don't see it, they, they will push back. Because when you try and push in the universe, when you try and push somebody, you know, in, uh, energetically they want to push back, even if they don't say it. But, you know, it'll be like, and also energetically when you push, when you use force, ego force in the universe, often there is a consequence for using ego force. You might not be immediate, but because you're trying to push out, you know, control and put fear out into the universe, there usually is some kind of, eventually, either immediately, or eventually some kind of you know some kind of feedback from the universe because you're using fear and control you know and the and you put that out energetically into the universe so in some form you know a lesson needs to be learned you know there's always like as you sow so shall you reap there's energetic things to what you put out into the universe so so that's the first thing i mean if you have to speak then speak but if i always try and if i'm in a conflict with someone is to, if I don't have to speak immediately, I will just make an excuse to come back to them. Like a thing I'd, I'd, I'd like to probably do is say, someone's said an argument or said they don't like me, I'll say, all right, um, I'll, I'll come back to you tomorrow on that or something like that. Because I don't want to speak unless necessary from a disconnected, angry place. Because I know it's not going to be, it's not necessary, that it's not, it's very, you know, if I push them with my ego, you know, it's, I might win, I might be able to intimidate them, but there's going to be some kind of con consequence to me using fear and intimidation to get my way. So I'd much rather take as much time as possible and delay it, my, my, my answer to them or my response to them, and then I'll spiritually process, because as I spiritually process, I'm going up the levels of consciousness, you know, and what, what I see the problem is and what solution I intuit and uh, will be totally different 
dependent on the amount of spiritual processing. If I can get to a place of peace and oneness, then that's, that's the optimal place. But it's not always practical to spend that much time. But whatever time I can, I'll do. I'll always try and get as much time and come back to them until the last possible minute. So I can just... Now, the, another thing to know on a mystical level, and I think there's, you know, anyone who's done and been in spiritual work for a long time, is sometimes when you, this is not always the case, but sometimes when you spiritually process something until it's gone in you, quite often the problem also vanishes at the same time mystically. And a lot of people have had experience of this, I'm sure. You know, um, I have a book, Bulletproof Peace, and I think I wrote a story. Like, I had in a, in a spiritual group I attended, uh, there was a woman who didn't like me, and so I didn't like her, and there was a lot of uh, bad exchanges, not bad exchanges, but ego battles going on in our sharing. And then I did a lot of forgiveness work, feel the feelings, you know, the observer, all the things we do here, Course in Miracles, to shift my anger. You know, because I felt it energetically. Every time she'd come in the room, I, I wouldn't like it, you know, my ego wouldn't like it. So one day I woke up and it was like it was 100%. I was praying, I was doing step work on her, I was doing A Course of Miracles, I was feeling my feelings. One day it was like it was lifted, I knew. I like, there's nothing there. And on that day I went in and she came up to me and she said, oh, you know, Sabir, you've taught me a, a great spiritual lesson. I just need to let you know I'm leaving the country. You know, so it's like, you know, it's almost like some people are your are your teachers, you know, until you learn the lesson and you fully transcend what they're there to show you, then they sort of stick around. And I found that once I sort of had fully released what was triggering me in that situation, funny enough, the universe took her out of the country, you know, and, and everything was, and she was also energetically okay with me, you know, somehow, because, you know, remember from the Course of Miracles, we're all one, we're all connected on some level. So if I hold like anger towards someone, even though if they might not consciously know it, but energetically, there is something that's holding you to them. Because energetically, we, we can all, whether we, we consciously know it or not, we energetically pick up the stuff. And we energetically, you could say we're all teachers and students to each other in, in the oneness of all. So if I'm holding, pretending to be nice to you, but I'm holding like, I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't stand your guts, you know, you, I mean, for me, in my experience, you're probably going to hang around because, you know, I haven't yet learnt. Or if you don't hang around, the universe will give me something similar to you there, so I can learn the lesson of transcending this issue. Because the universe usually sh sends you the same lesson over and over and over again around certain issues uh, until you get it, until you transcend it, until you've released it. Um, now, there is a major thing on how to handle people which is a critical thing, which I also learned from Hawkins, you've got to understand there's, there's a very important demarcation with people. People who are in integrity and people who are not. And, and you've got to, at a certain point, you've got to be able to intuit who you're dealing with. That's, that's the only thing. You know, there's different levels of integrity and there's different levels of unintegrity, but there's a major line. Like, and is my main is my main intention, and have I done an, have I done enough of an acceptance that I should pursue integrity in my life to the best of my ability, or uh, I I would be one of the people in the world. I mean, through Hawkins' research, seventy eight percent of the global population is below integrity. In a Western country, fifty percent of the population is below integrity. So if you meet a person randomly on the street there's a 50% chance they're aligned with trying to be integrous and honest, and there's a 50% chance that they have no alignment with integrity. So they're self-centered and essential. So they only, they, they, um, they're, their only motives for dealing with you are, are selfish. You know, they're not, you know, if it's like you say something and it's not in their interests, then they'll manipulate, they'll control, they'll lie to get what they want. Whereas someone with, with integrity will, you know, you can speak to them rationally and they may, you know, you may have a chance. So that's the main thing I, 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 I try and uh, intuit with other people. Sometimes you can't get it straight away. It takes a while for a person to reveal their colours. But if I think, yes, this, this builder is not integrous. Because you've got to like, um, with people who are not integrity, you've got to, they won't respond to you well. Uh, there's two aspects. One is how you deal with someone below integrity. 
is you can't be weak and wishy-washy and sort of lovey-dovey mm. with people who are below integrity because they they see that for people below integrity if you're nice that they, they see that as stupid yeah you know so if you see if you see someone who's a criminal and you try and be nice to them they think well i'm going to take this person to the cleaners you know this person is really really dumb um, if you're speaking to someone who's in, with integrity they're also aligned with integrity you know so then you can ha you can speak sensibly rationally and they'll get it you know they won't be self-centered in the thing so first of all you know but so the response you know even if I'm, de you know, in the end we forgive, every you know, it's forgiveness and love. But how you deal with a person above integrity and below is different. Mm. So, so, oh, sorry, sorry. yeah. In that situation, I felt such a strong negative energy yeah. inside of me. Yeah. Inside of my chest, that's where, oh, that's where I've noticed since I've learned to feel the feelings, where I feel the most of the energy oh. of, of various kinds. And it was so corrosive and destructive yes. that I have not. I don't feel like I've had it for at least a, a year, if not longer than that. And I just felt like my my soul was screaming to get out of that place, mm. for that to be over. And I then noticed like how how much I work I would do, willingly not to be in that place again because mm. it was horrendous. And I felt like I had no choice, but possibly you know, if I did have time to reflect, I possibly could have had choice, but I felt that it was against my choice I was pulled into that conflict. So you had to respond immediately? Uh, yeah, because yeah. because um, the, 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 the child was crying and screaming there and then. Right. When I was asked for an answer, so it wasn't, if I said, you know, I will come back to you, it's like, how can you be, you know, so cruel to, to say that when we need immediate solution because we've got here an upset child? Right, that's fine. So, um, so if you're dealing with someone below integrity, still the thing of with both issues above and below integrity is to process. You know, is to process, and ultimately, it's trying to deal with people uh, above in, above integrity. You try and deal with them, uh, you know, rationally and with love, and below integrity, you deal with them with with authentic power. You could say love. But you deal with them. Um, you deal with them because you know what you're dealing with. But you don't want to hold anger. Uh, you can hold anger, but to the extent, uh, in my experience, to the to extent you are you're dealing with someone below integrity and you hold negativity, it won't go well. It won't. It'll it'll go less well, and there'll be more problems. Um, often, when you transcend your own inner hatred, own resentment to get someone below integrity and you deal with them firmly, usually you'll get, you know, you'll get help from the universe. But it's a bit like if you're dealing with someone below integrity but you hold hatred and anger towards them, you, you tend not to get spiritual help. Because it'd be suddenly like, you know, if, I've, if, if, someone's been, if someone's below integrity and I'm having an argument with them, and, then, and I don't process my anger and my resentment against them, and I try and deal with them and be firm with them, my experience would be the situation tends to be stuck and tends to be an ongoing battle. Mm -hmm. Whereas often when I, when I process my stuff, and even though I have to be firm with them, and I feel I've let it go, often this solution is like suddenly a person will appear which will help me out with that solution. Uh, there, there was an example, I can give you, give you a practical example. So I had a neighbor uh, in the B&B and we were doing a construction work. And, um, and this guy, the builder knocked his wall down and he sort of said, he got so angry and he said, I'm going to, you know, basically he was going to destroy everything we tried to do. And, and he, wanted, he, wanted, uh, he wanted money as a payoff for the inconvenience. And I sort of said no. And he was making a lot of trouble with planning applications and stuff. And um, so I was doing a lot of praying, a lot of Course in Miracles, a lot of field feelings for him. And as soon as I started to do that, it's like my level of consciousness went from fear. It started going up to, towards, you know, acceptance and towards peace. And as soon as I did that, as, as soon as I did that, it was like, and I'm not familiar with laws, and, 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 and he was. He was very savvy, and he knew how to intimidate and make, make up all kinds of threats for money and stuff and how to spoil planning applications. So he was really trying to be nasty. As soon as I started praying for him and doing the Course of Miracles on him, feeling my feelings and doing like non-stop prayer, 
then I went to a tw you know I go to these twelve step meetings, and I had this thought. It went in my mind. You know, I I, I remember there was a guy from a who seemed like he had a really good legal background, you know, and I, and I hadn't seen him for a long time in the meetings I went to. And I went, I went in, I was praying for this guy, and I went to the meeting, and he was sitting next to me, you know. And then I said to him, you know, I knew it was a God job, because I had the thought of him, and I hadn't seen him for a long time. I went to the meeting, he sat next to me, and, and then I said to him, can I be cheeky, can I ask for your number? He said, yeah, sure. And then uh, I called him, and he's fine, you know. He said he gave me all the legal advice I needed what to respond, how to respond to it. And, uh, and then the guy knew that he couldn't mess with me because he knew that, because he thought I was stupid. And that's the thing, like when you're dealing with a wolf, i.e. Below, below 200, if you come across as spiritual and stupid, you know, a wolf's just going to carry on savaging you. Mm -hmm. You've got to forgive them. If you don't forgive them, you won't get divine help. And it'll tend to be, you're in fear and they're attacking and it's going to be like a messy battle. But, so you want to be strong, but you also want to forgive. Then you get the quick divine, divine help. So those are, there's probably other things I'd say on it, but those are some examples of how I would deal with it. But, you know, if I'm holding fear and, and, and not filling out my fear and anger, if I haven't forgiven him and I'm holding attack thoughts and anger and revenge and hatred, then it's going to be a, a stuck situation. Or it's a situation where you probably have to learn the lesson at another point. Exactly. Yep. Okay.